Alright, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to making 3D games in Game Maker. Uh, so, let's see, if I recall last time, um, I talked about all of these crazy, uh, like, blocks and things, and geometric shapes. And in this part, I think I said I was going to talk about lighting and fog, so let's go and do that. Uh, lighting and fog. Uh, lighting is obviously mainly to make the world look pretty, and fog has a couple of reasons. It can make the world look pretty, uh, but it can also uh, actually improve the performance of your game a little bit by uh, cutting down on the amount of things it has to draw at once. So let's see, in here, uh, this is the floor, and this is the block, and I'm going to say, uh, very simply, D3D fog enable. Fog, oh, is it set fog? There it is, so it's D3D set fog. Let's see, this takes a couple arguments. Uh, enable, which is obviously going to be true. A uh, color, which is going to be, how about C white? Uh, start point should probably be, how about maybe, um, I don't know, I'm going to go with 320 and end point. And I believe the room is uh, about a thousand pixel units across, so I'm going to go with, um, I don't know, how about 640? Because those are nice uh, round looking numbers, right? Anyway, I'm going to run the game again, and if you've seen pretty much any video game at all, you probably have an idea of what this is going to look like. And you can see off in the distance, the um, the color of the ground is blending away, it's fading away to white evenly. And if I get farther away from the block, it's going to fade away to white also. And that's pretty interesting, I guess, if you were to make this a how about C black instead. And I'm actually going to move in the, uh, the start point a little bit more so that you can see a little bit more of the, uh, the transition. It's going to start much closer to the camera, but um, should be uh, able to see the variation a little bit more. And this is going to fade away. You see the block is getting darker. Yeah, this is a little bit easier to see. And after a certain point, I'm uh, 640 pixel units away now, and it's completely black. Of course, the sky isn't, um, the sky doesn't have fog drawn over it, and the reason for that the white background is simply filled in before drawing is started, and um, and after that, Game Maker's rendering doesn't actually touch it, so it doesn't have the opportunity to draw fog over it. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the background color is not there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go into the background tab and make the color black. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to kind of cheat, you could say uh, background color. Let's see, set background color, what is it? Okay, so it's simply background color equals C, black, and that would make the sky black. Okay, so now the sky is black and the box, uh, if I were to get far enough away, it's pretty much just going to fade away into nothingness. Alright, so that's good. If you don't want to mess around with um, making the sky black by setting the background color, you could do things like uh, perhaps drawing a sphere really far away from the camera. So, D3D, draw ellipsoid. And you can start that at like camera dot x minus a thousand. Okay, so the camera is essentially now being drawn inside a massive ball, and since uh, since the ball itself is being drawn, it will be covered by fog, even though the room background color is uh, is not set to black. You might have to mess around with the coordinates a little bit if you have culling enabled, but uh, I'll save that discussion for when I uh, make a video on things like back back face culling. Anyway, so fog is pretty simple. I am going to disable this for now, and I'm also going to disable this for now, for when I talk about lighting, because I don't want the two effects to uh, interfere with each other when I'm trying to describe them. So for lighting, this D3, okay, so I'm not on point when it comes to, uh, when it comes to knowing my game maker functions today. Is it set lighting? Okay, so you have to say D3D set lighting, true if you want to turn lighting on in the first place and then you have to create a light so d3d light define and there are two different types of uh, lights you can define there are directional lights and there are point lights uh, directional lights are defined by a 3d vector which would be the direction the light is traveling and point lights are uh, like a torch or a candle or something they have a fixed point in space and the way surfaces are lit depends on how far away the um, how far away they are from the light source. Um, you also have I might as well mention this one uh, D three D light define ambient. That's just going to be the um, the color of uh, surfaces that are not lit. Usually, I believe that's black. 
you could set it to say blue if you wanted a I don't know an underwater scene or something like that but I'm not going to mess around with it at least not now I might mess around with it at the end of this video anyway I'm gonna start with d3d light defined direction and then that's going to be you need an index which has to be a number from I believe 0 to 7 you can have up to seven lights defined in game maker um, and the direction X Y and Z I'm going to make that one one I need a comma there, 1, 1, and negative 1, so it's traveling down across the room from um, this point to this point uh, in the downwards direction. And the color is going to be C white. And you can have lights of different colors. Um, I usually go with white unless I'm going for a, like a weather effect or a time of day effect or something like that. Anyway, this is actually not how it's supposed to look at all. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually enable this light. That's right, that's what I'm supposed to do. So D3D light, enable. So you basically have to, after you define a light, uh, you have to remember to turn it on. Um, and this is so that you can have multiple light sources that aren't all turned on at the same time. So in this case, I have the index zero light, and I have to remember to enable it. And now you can see uh, things appear, and the faces are shaded differently, depending on the light is coming from up here, and it's going towards down there. And if I were to, uh, can't really see the top of this, uh, can't really see the top surface of this box, but it would look something like this. It would be uh, lit because the light is facing it, and the light is uh, traveling away from these surfaces, so they're not really well lit at all. I think you can actually, no, that's uh, it's pretty black. You can't actually see the, um, like the texture or anything like that. Anyway, I'm going to get out of there. I'm going to disable this. Next, I'm going to make this a point light instead, so D through D light define point, and index is going to be 0, X, Y, and Z. I could make it 0, 0. I could make it the camera's uh, coordinates. I don't really want to do that. If I would set the point light to the camera's coordinates, then you would see the uh, shading on the faces change as I walk around the block, and I don't really want to do that. So how about, I don't know, 400, 600, and how about slightly off the ground? So maybe, I don't know, 16. And the range is how far away the light can be, is how far the light can travel. So let's make this how about uh, 200. And the color is again C white. All right, let's run the game. All right, so running the game, and the floor is actually not lit at all, which is interesting. I'm going to investigate that in a minute. But as you can see, uh, the different faces of this cube are shaded differently, depending on uh, how they're facing the light, which should be somewhere, I want to say down here is um, the coordinates that I gave it, 400, uh, 400 600 or something like that. Uh, this face is brighter because it's a little bit closer and it's uh, more perpendicular to the light source. This one is darker because it's farther away and it's more parallel to the light source. I know that some of the 3D primitives in GameMaker have weird uh, face normal calculations, but that's um, I was actually not aware that the floor is one of them. Uh, what happens if I change this to a block that's essentially uh, two-dimensional? Let's see. Because this should draw the exact same thing, um, just uh, with slightly different methods. And I'm curious to see if this uh, actually fixes the problem. All right, it does not. Interesting. I can also see that uh, the top face of the block is, um, is not lit properly, because this should have some lighting too. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, let's go and change this back to uh, from block. What was it? Floor. It was floor, and that is the basics of lighting in fog. Uh, I said I was going to mess around with changing the ambient light color. Let's go back to the light direction because that one appeared to be working properly. D through D light define uh, ambient, right? And let's change this to have out blue, like I said before. And this should make things interesting. Of course, you could also set the color of the light itself to be blue, um, but I'll get to that in a minute also. So yeah, this is uh, actually kind of really bizarre looking. The away facing, uh, the away facing faces are dark blue, and the light facing faces are uh, a little bit blue, but they're uh, pretty normal. And let's see, just for fun, I think setting the light color to blue should pretty much make it look the opposite. I have not messed around with uh, like ambient light colors in a very long time, which I really should have done before uh, deciding to record this. 
All right, there you have it. Everything's a very... This is really actually kind of hard to see, but it's uh, everything has been blended with the color of blue. As well as uh, the color black, because that's the, uh, the no light color. All right, let's go and undo that. Now next, I, uh, I do want to combine these two. These two effects. So let's uncomment those couple lines of code and run the game again. And uh, the whole game world should look a little bit more interesting than it did at the start of this video. Uh, it should look a lot less flat, should look a bit darker. And uh, as you can see, it, it quite does. With a nice fade to black fog effect out in the distance and with the, uh, the faces of this block shaded a little bit. And if you did want to, you could actually, as I said before, you could have two different lights defined at once. So I'm going to define a point light. Light define point of, uh, that's going to be the first index, or the one index. Uh, the x is going to be camera.x. It's going to be basically the same point light I was using before, except it's going to follow the camera around. And uh, it's been enabled down on line 13, which is good. And now uh, you can see there is the uh, the normal lighting on this block, and it's additionally, it's getting a little bit... Um, it does get brighter as I walk towards it, because there's the additional point light uh, attached to the camera. And these faces illuminate as I walk towards them as well. When, if I was, uh, if I was to be quite far away, they would be completely black because uh, there is no light hitting them. Alright, perfect. So, if you do want to make your 3D games in Game Maker look a little bit more alive, you probably do want to mess around with lighting and fog. I'm not entirely what's going on with point lights and flat surfaces in that in Game Maker, other than, other than that I know they've been reported to be working kind of strangely in the past. You might have noticed when I was walking around that the floor wasn't being illuminated by the point light, it was only, uh, it had the one solid color given by the, um, the directional light. But that's enough for me. My name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later.